Hey everybody, Wyduck here again, this time with a replay on Newkirk Precinct between two Terrans. And in the bottom left, spawning as the Red Terran, representing Team Evil Geniuses, we have the Muslim. And the Muslim is one of the great ladder warriors on the North American scene. Unfortunately, he has been really been able to turn that into a lot of offline tournament success, but I believe it will be coming in the future. I just think he's such a talented player. So I think offline he'll be able to do things in the future. But his opponent is also very promising, spawning in the bottom right as the Blue Terran. Currently teamless, we have Neeb. Now Neeb is 15 years old, so he's very young. So he's got many gaming years ahead of himself. He's playing from New York. And don't ever underestimate the young players such as Maru. Maru shows you why. And this isn't like professional sports. Obviously, if you're a 25-year-old, I think you have a big advantage over a 15-year-old. But in gaming, I don't think that advantage is nearly as pronounced. So both players definitely have a chance to win here. Neeb is going for refinery first. Uh, the Muslim went the same way, but his refinery is put down a lot earlier. So it looks like both players might be going for some possibly Reaper scouting. And on Aqualon Waste, it's a little bit difficult to use Reapers in a lot of... Uh, I'm sorry, this is not Aqualon Waste. This is Newkirk Precinct. Uh, on Newkirk Precinct, it's kind of difficult um, because the only way into the main is you have to actually jump into the natural and then you can jump up. So Reapers are not that effective on this map for that reason. But who knows? They are saving up a lot of resources, so that leads me to believe that they're going to be going for the factory. There we go. The factory is going down. We have Marines on the way for... To Muslim. Now, Neeb actually sent out an SCV to take a look around for proxies. Now, this will this will delay him slightly as that SCV wasn't mining, so he's not going to have as many minerals. So the supplies are going to be slightly in favor of the Muslim if the Muslim plays exactly the same way as Neeb does, simply because of that SCV scouting for a little bit. Um, Newkirk Precinct is one of those maps where proxies are prevalent. And they can be very strong. And it looks like this Marine is also looking for proxies as well. Uh, not going to lose any SCV mining time. And I've made a note of this before. You have these little buildings in the way. And these buildings can play a crucial part in proxies. Because you can build buildings behind this little building here. And if your SCV is scouting on the south end of this, they won't see it. You have to actually scout around the building. So there are quite a few places you can put proxy barracks. You can put them here. Neep scouted the third base here. You can actually put them here as well. Uh, there's lots of places where you can put the ba where you can put the barracks. For example, you can put them here. I haven't seen them put here where the uh, debris is. Uh, I don't think this would be necessarily a bad location either. But there are many locations you can hide proxy buildings, so that's why it is important to scout. Now we do have the Muslim going for Banshee and Cloak. We have the same thing coming from Neeb. So I think uh, they have the exact same thinking process here. So it's going to come down to a battle of micro. Who's going to be able to micro better? Now you do have to remember that neither player has the second command center up. And most importantly, orbital command. So if players immediately get 50 energy and they drop that mule down, then they're going to have to wait a while for that energy to regenerate. For them to be able to detect a cloaked banshee so that might be a problem now the muslim is going to be going for a reactor immediately behind this so he's not going to really need to scan nearly as much from neeb we have nothing coming out of the starport yet the muslim's banshee is going to hit his opponent's base before neeb now neeb is going for the raven as well now banshees do see each other so they know exactly what is coming in the widow mines are ready they haven't been burrowed yet the Muslim is going to be microwaving this Banshee as well as he can. He's already got two kills. 
He has to be wary of this Widow Mine. He's going to be targeting down SCVs as well. When the Marines get close, he'll be firing on them. Now, we do have Neebs Banshee firing down on these Marines. But unfortunately, with that Raven out, this Banshee might not be able to do too much there. And this Banshee from Demuslim already has 9 kills, 10. The scan does go down. Able to pick off another Marine, getting 12 kills. Unfortunately, the Banshee for Neeb is not doing anything. And so this Banshee with 13 kills is finally going to be destroyed by the auto turret. But if you take a look at resources lost, I think you know who is clearly ahead. The amount of workers killed was six. So six SCV down, six SCVs down. That's quite a bit for Neeb. And now that Banshee has one hit left, but the Muslim is going to be moving across the map with his Marine Force instead because he knows he killed quite a few Marines. He killed quite a few SCVs as well. He has a supply and army advantage. And now he's going to be pressing it. Now he's going to be reinforcing his army with a Viking as well. Both players are constructing tanks. And I believe Neve knows an attack is incoming. Now, he's going to land his Orbital Command at his natural, so maybe he doesn't know. Uh, he's going to be reinforcing this position with Marines and Mines, but this mine is going to go down immediately, not able to do anything. Now, two auto turrets do go down. Now, Siege Tank is in position already on the ramp, on the high ground. Both players do have Vikings out. The Marines are focusing down on the Viking, it looks like. But the Marines are getting blown up very slowly by the Siege Tanks, so resources lost is evening out identical currently. So good hold by Neeb. Unfortunately, his Orbital Command is not able to land, but the Muslims is able to land. And so over time, this economic advantage is going to show up on the scoreboard. Now, Neeb has been able to defend off this attack, and he's going to land his Orbital Command, try and get his economy going. So at the beginning, the Muslim had a huge lead. He still has a 10 supply lead, but Neeb has been able, for the most part, been able to stay strong and stabilize in this game. We do have a third command center coming from the Muslim, as well as more Banshees. This is very interesting, because Neeb does have three Vikings out, and obviously a Banshee versus three Vikings is not a very good deal for the Banshee. But I really think the Muslim is primed to win. If you take a look at the supplies, he's constantly ahead in supplies. And it's because those six SCVs that went down and also the Marines that went down earlier, it kind of provides you an exponential advantage further on into the game because those SCVs can mine much more minerals over the period, a long period of time. Now we do have Neeb moving across the south side of the map with three Vikings. They're going to land here, but we do have a tank. I don't think the Vikings are going to do very well here against a single tank. The Vikings are going to have to lift off. This auto turret will be blown to smithereens as well. So Neeb's little harassment did not really work. And now the Banshee is back for harassment. We've got two SCVs down already. So the Muslim is going back to the tried and true. He's just wreaking havoc on all these SCVs, able to kill five more. A seventh SCV did go down. Now, the Marines are giving chase, but once again, there's not enough energy on this Orbital Command, on either Orbital Command. And now the Banshee is just going to make way to the Expansion Orbital. And now the SCVs are now under attack again. The Marines are going to have to come down the ramp slowly. Three Vikings are in position. This Banshee needs to get out of there if it wants to survive. At 20 life, the Banshee is going to be able to... Oh, just able to scoot out of there with 5 energy remaining. But Neeb has lost so many more SEVs. He's lost 11 more in that attack. That Banshee, I believe, has 11 kills. Yes, that is one hero Banshee. Take a look at resources lost. So Neeb, once again, is really behind economically. Now, he does have his third orbital. Orbital. Excuse me. But so does the Muslim. Now, Neeb did have a keyboard problem, so he paused momentarily, but I think he's going to have bigger problems. Now, he is going to move across the map. He does have combat shields. The Muslim doesn't have that, so the Marines from Neeb are slightly better. 
Also, the Muslim doesn't have stim pack done yet, so even though he does have a bigger army, his marines are significantly worse than Neeb's marines. So he's gonna have to make use of those siege tanks. The sensor tower is gonna be going down here, but Neeb is gonna be moving in here. Armies have sighted each other. And now the tanks are sieging up. Now these tanks are gonna be able to do a lot of damage to those Marines. Unfortunately, Neeb wasn't able to really use that stim advantage. Those siege tanks just have such good range. Now these Marines are coming in here from the Muslim, but they're just gonna get blown apart by these two tanks. The tank advantage strictly goes to the Muslim. We've got five tanks compared to just two from Neeb. So even though Neeb does have the Marine advantage, that advantage is gonna end soon as those upgrades are going to finish. Once Stimpak is finished, Neeb is not going to be able to push anymore. He hasn't been able to push really even though he did have the Marine advantage. Now the Marines from the Muslim, once the Stimpak is ready, he's going to charge forward. He's going to focus down on those tanks. The Marines are doing all the damage to each other, but unfortunately we have so many tanks behind that initial Marine line for the Muslim. Neeb's army is entirely destroyed. He only has two Vikings and two Medivacs left. Now Vikings can't hit Marines, so Marines are going to have a field day picking apart this Viking. The Viking is going to slowly fly over this big hole. I don't know what kind of construction design is this, but fly over this big hole to escape death. But Neeb is behind by about 20 supply. The Muslim has been able to defend his third base from that initial attack. And now the Muslim is primed and in position to take victory here. He's just created so many SCV losses for Neeb, it's been difficult for Neeb to stabilize and get back in the game. So even when Neeb had the upgrade advantage in regards to Marines, he just wasn't able to press that advantage because the Muslim had so many more tanks. And now that's, oh wow, a lot of tank fire goes down on one Marine. That's a big combat shield, but unfortunately I think artillery cannons kind of put an end to your shield blocking. Now Neeb's Marines are going to be engaging here. The Muslim is falling back. Now Neeb only has one tank in this composition. We've got seven from the Muslim. This is a very bad trade for Neeb. He needs more tanks in this composition. We still only have one. Now we do have two on the way, but are they going to be out in time? <coughs> Excuse me. Now Neeb is going to confront here at this debris top location here, but I don't think this is a very good concave. Now Neeb is rushing in here. All the Marines are getting slaughtered. Neeb loses all his Marines, but so does the Muslim. But now it's just a tank on tank fight. Now we've got five tanks to one. And uh, I'm not an expert at math, but I don't think five tanks are going to lose to one. The refinery does go down, and uh, now Neeb's third base is under attack. Now we've got another harassment attack from auto turrets at the second as well from this lone raven. Neeb is going to tap out. So good game by both players, but the Muslim was just able to get the advantage early on, able to use that advantage to just continuously press forward, and and he just didn't let Neeb really get into the game. Uh, so good game by both players. The Muslim is the victor. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I'm a fan favorite, or why, excuse me, why the Muslim is a fan favorite. He just has, he's just very good at execution, and uh, we saw it here in this game as well. So I will see you guys next time.